get your kid on a set of drums. You have to have a multi-thinking brain. It goes beyond drumming, but drumming is the way in. No other instrument has to focus on that many things at one time. I think that is the best sales pitch to become a drummer I've ever heard. And they will have a great, great time, an incredible <laughs> time playing drums.
<laughs> wow. <laughs> so all of you out there watching, please welcome back for the first time in five years, Mr. Jonathan Sugarfoot Moffat. So great to have you back, man. And this time you brought your full rig with you too, so. Yeah, well, my battleship with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Had the three cannon guns. Yes. Ready to go to war with the groove. We figured if we were going to bring you back, we had to have the full spectacle this time. So. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's so great to have you back. And we've been hanging out for the last few days, and we've been filming all week. It's Long been a work in progress all the time and, and trying to make it right for you, entertain you, get you thrilled about drumming. Mm. And that's why it's called your meal. That's right. So you should you should work here or something. All right, give me a job. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll be a house it. drummer. <laughs> exactly. Now, for any of you who maybe aren't familiar with Sugarfoot, I hope you are by now, but you've played with Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson, the Jacksons, Elton John, Madonna, Cameo, and that's only a handful of artists you've played with. And maybe you're also familiar with the videos that Jonathan filmed with us five years ago which over the last few years have gotten over 110 million views on YouTube. So I think that's some kind of world record or something in, in the drum community. Yeah, I didn't even know it was that many. <laughs> it's a lot, man. Mm -hmm. They have yeah. been all over the world. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed the time then. It was a special time, my first time ever doing anything like this. So it was yeah. new for me, and I didn't know what to expect. And um, Dave and, and my wife said, uh, Myra said that it's going to be a million views on one the first day and I said, oh yeah, come on, let's go straight to the ER. <laughs> There's no way my video is going to get a million views in one day. Then for the next, that didn't, not only did that happen, but the next eight days in a row, a million views each day and I was in shock and I went to the ER. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. And I, I think this trip, we uh, hopefully top that with some new videos that we'll have coming your way over the next few weeks, few months and probably all year throughout 2023, so. My, my sincere hope is that you'll enjoy what I do. The views is one thing, and it's great, and it's accomplishment, and all that stuff like that, but more than that, that when you're watching the views and doing the views, that you're having a good time with me, mm. you're feeling my spirit, feeling my soul, and feeling what I have to, uh, to present to you, and my performance and my gift from God, you know, so that's what's important, that I share my gifts with God with people around the world, yeah. and that they can relate to it and tune into it and want to see it, want to feel me, because when you hear me play, you feel me, and that's what's important for me. And uh, I would second that, sitting in front of this bass drum, like <laughs> three feet from my leg, you can feel it. <laughs> yeah. And we do this kind of stuff inside of Drumeo all the time with our community of students and coaches, just like Sugarfoot. And Jonathan, you have a course on the grooves of Michael Jackson you filmed a few years ago. Um, like I mentioned, we have a ton of new videos coming out over the next year, and you can head over to drumeo.com forward slash trial uh, to check out everything we're up to over there. We're talking all about melodic drumming with the triple threat drum yeah. kit. So I guess to start off, how did you come up with this setup? Because it's pretty unique. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty pretty interesting because I, when I was a young boy, I mean like under the age of 10, my father was a Baptist, uh, so he went, went to his Baptist church, Ebenezer Baptist Church. And my brothers and I, and my two brothers and I, and my sister and stuff, and we would sometimes sit upstairs in the balcony and there's, the band was up there. They had a drummer who I was always watching. Mm -hmm. You know, he had a very small kit, but he was from play. And then, then they had the B3 organist. And it was just them two that sounded like a full-on band. It was amazing. <laughs> and But what fascinated me, I watched the B3 organist as much as I watched the drummer. And he was doing all his keyboards, phenomenal chord structures and, and, and uh, transitions and stuff. And then pulling the draw bars and, and then run, working this, uh, all the controls on it. I thought, that, well, how is he doing on that? I'm thinking it's a little boy, maybe five, by five or six years old, something like that. And But then it fascinated me. While his hands were doing all this movement, I watched his foot moving on this, this pedal board of keys. I didn't know what it was about. You know, I just said, whoa, how is he doing all of this? And how is he doing all of that at the same time? And he was doing the bass patterns and bass notes, changing melodically. And I fascinated me. I was laying on the floor in my suit and, and like <laughs> this and watch him and marvel at it, you know, with a little boy's mind, because I, I didn't think it as intelligent as now, but something clicked with that. It stuck with me fascination of how one person can do all of that at one time. Mm. So I, I started moving forward. I started playing drums all my, my career and learning and, and growing and stuff like that. Then it was, it was in my late teens, I thought about it. I asked, you know what? 
I wish I could do it, put together a kit with a lot of bass drums. I even in school, when the teacher wasn't looking, I drew it out. The three, oh, five really? bass, the bass drums, five bass drums across. And they were like over like an eye. It was like over. They weren't round. They were like over, making a futuristic <laughs> look. So I did drew it out with that impression. I wish I could do this. And then in in uh, like the late 80s, I said, you know what? I want to see if I can put together a kit like that. That would be awesome. But I said, who can, why can I play it with that many bass drums? Look, look how wide the three are. It's it's massive. It's you, pretty much to the edge of the studio on both sides. You need about two feet on each, either side, both yeah. sides to cover the five. So um, anyway, so I, um, I, I imagined it. I said, I'm going to do that. So the first time I've ever done it, I had to go scale down to electronic drums. Mm. And I, I got joined uh, D drums, and they sent me five modules. Some people have seen it on YouTube. Uh, five modules and five kick. I had five uh, turbo 5000 DW pedals. And I had DW cut out and make this flat pedal board that was like an arc. Mm. And with the, with the modules, it's easy. You can get them right next to each other, not like this <laughs> on yeah. a stand. So it's very close. And I can, like the B3 organist, play everything in the notes right next to each other. It was much, much easier. That was the first time. I, I forgot whether that was a 93 or 4 or whatever, or 92 even. And I, saw, I did the uh, five bass drums. It was actually, to tell you quite honestly, that was in 90. I did that. It was a clinic. And I did it there, but I used it for, this. I just finished playing Janet Jackson and I used it to audition with Janet Jackson in 93. I had an acoustic kit, then I had a separately, that five bass drum, uh, D drum kit. And then on if, I, I played the five bass drum kit and she was like, what is he doing? How is he doing that? <laughs> she came around the back and looked and said, oh my God, talking to her assistant. Yeah. Like they couldn't, they couldn't believe it that she was sold. So um, anyway, so. That's when I actually used it in an application for an artist to see it. But of course, when I asked, can I have them on stage? They say no. I was oh. <laughs> so I like a little boy. Oh. So they, I just say no, but so I had a one bass drum. But that was the introduction to my melodic bass drum concept. Mm -hmm. Like the beat based on the B3 organist who plays the bass patterns. And guess what? I'm doing all the bass notes here. But what it does, the empowerment of that is that I wanted to see drums are so musical and broad in scope. Much like a piano player, organ, these instruments there. I, and I saw that all the elements of drums, I said to do that, if I can do that, I have three sets of melodies I can be, create music with by myself. Mm. Or I can create themes of rhythms and stuff and, and have audible sonics between them. I got the bottom with the bass drums. That's the scale of notes and stuff and pitches and stuff. I can play music. I can play songs in by myself. In the middle, we got the toms, the middle tier, all the notes and stuff. You can play fills and very mm -hmm. colorful stuff. Up top, I use a lot of symbols. As you can see, 16 symbols, because I like a variety of colors and sounds and sonics and timbres and tone, tone resonance and everything. So I have 16 symbols. All of them are pitch, different pitch, different resonance, different tones. So in that, I can make my melodies on those by catching them and making a voice, a different note, a different pitch, a different character. When I choke it, I can choke it fast. I can choke it like this. Real slow, this one is moving out of place. I've got to fix it before I cut myself. This one go, I can go. Okay, then I, I do like that. Like that, or I can go. There's three different mm. characters of sound you get out of it. Now I can go. That's even faster. So that's four different characters of sound I can get out of a symbol. So I, I like to have those three tiers, melodies here, melodies there, melodies these right here, and I can play a show by myself, which I do on my, my clinic. I play the Michael's music, and I play these, my kit, and I play it melodically. Yeah. That's how the con that came about, being a little boy, fascination with the B3 organist bass pedals, and I'd applied it to the drums. Yeah, I love that. And I think one of the coolest parts about this is you've taken some of the most famous songs that exist out there, like, for example, Beat It, and you found ways to incorporate that concept yeah. into it. Could you even just demonstrate like okay. how you use some of that stuff maybe in a popular song? He pulled a pop quiz on me. I haven't played that <laughs> in so long. Right? At least if I can figure or, out the or movement. Or even just some grooves. Like how, how would you take maybe just a basic pop groove? And, I'm gonna do beat it for you. I'm gonna do beat yeah. it for you. Let me see if I can figure it out. Uh, get, get it, hopefully I can get it clean. Because the bass drums, I gotta move my foot between each of them. And then you, once you get acclimated to it, you can do it clean. I haven't played in a while, but let me try it. I'm, I'm, I'm daring. I'm bold. Here I love go. it. <laughs>
if yeah. I can mix it up and make any kind of variations, the melodies between the kicks make different voices of melodies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you still got it. <laughs> I put you on the spot, but you yeah. crushed it. I just got to settle back into the memory of auto mode. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, I, we were just talking about a few others. You've also done that in, you mentioned Jam was another one that you've done that. Ooh, and, why you want to do me that? <laughs> and If, I think, was another one. Oh. But, um, you don't have to play those, but for any of you watching, uh, those are some tracks you could check out that you've applied that to. It's tricky. It's very tricky. There's an element to that as well, is that most people would think Doing that with the bass drums, most drummers want to go left to right. Mm. I switch it up because I like my configuration of times. If you notice, I got the smallest time, of course, like normal right-handed guy. And then on, on this side, I got the largest bass drum. So mm. the smallest time, to the, it matches out. One, tail, one visual is going like that, another one's going like that. Instead of having a big, big time over a big bass drum, it looks too cluttered on that side. Yeah. To make it look more clean and balanced, I put the biggest bass drum over here under the smallest time. Mm. And then the biggest time will be over here under the, the, uh, under the smallest bass drum. Yeah. So that visually to me made more sense, but that changed everything up. And I had to re-scramble my thinking and rethink things and equate it out. Whereas normally, if you got the normal way, like I said, small bass drum, medium bass drum, large, you go with your pedal board, doom, doom, doom. Natural, boom, you could do that all day later, boom, boom, boom. What I did and had to do because I saw that visual of the look of the set, I had to go the opposite, boom, 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 right to left, yeah. which is tricky for the brain, and you get to scramble your eggs. Your, your brain <laughs> is kind of called the eggs or pop your yolk. <laughs> Keeps uh, you sharp. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it's, but it's challenging, which I love to challenge myself. You don't grow unless you challenge yourself. So I challenged myself, and it became a natural thing, and that, that didn't take that long. So it became natural for me, and it makes me unique in that I do the opposite from what most people would do it, and it makes it stand out better and a, a different, unique aspect of it. Yeah, and, and you were saying for the when you were rehearsing for This Is It, did you have three bass drums or or what was the setup like for that? Well, I wanted the three bass drums and I ordered them, I had them in, and the sound guy said, No, no, you can't have three bass drums. You can have two, but you take up too many channels. That's an extra channel I could use for vocals or something else, instrumentation. I said, But I, but this is my setup. I designed it from you. I said, I did like a little boy. Michael lets me have what I want. <laughs> Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> so I say, Michael, let me have it. He say, no, you can't have that. You're running out of channels. You can't take that. Can't have it. And so anyway, one time after the sound, so I, I had my tech sneak the other bass drum in. And um, the next day I came in and, and Michael came in and, and he said, oh, foot, that's incredible. I love it. I love it. Wow, you designed a new one. Because every tour with him, I would design Victory Tour. I had an incredible set. And then the, the History Tour, you know, it had one bass drum, but it was different. And then on This Is It, I had that three bass drum set up. Then I had this three bass drum set up on a uh, Cirque du Soleil, Michael Jackson, the Mortal Tour. But on um, This Is It, he said, I love it, I love it. And then the, the guy said, you can't, you can't have that. And Michael said, no, let him have it. He can do what he wants. And I'm like Michael's brother. So I had some clout. I was like, yeah, that's right. Don't, yeah. mess, with, don't mess with me, man. Who you think you messing with? <laughs> I was feeling like that. I didn't say that. But, but yeah, and Michael said, no, no, I love it. I love it. Let him have it. It's okay. You know, he can, he, I want it. I want it. And and the guy turned around and walked away. <laughs> you know, funny, man. Oh, and I was awesome. like, mm -hmm. I felt the power. I said, nah, nah. My, my had, little brother got hooked out on you. Yeah, you had Michael's approval. Yes. Um, just for everyone watching, I'm sure they want to hear even just a little bit more of that. Do you mind just playing a bit of the kit, kind of showing what you can do with the three bass drums? Okay, I'll try to create something on this. I like to work in spontaneity, so yeah. if it's not totally perfect, excuse me.
That's so cool, man. It's a little tricky, like I said. Yeah. That was just a totally impromptu. I didn't know what I was going to do. Yeah, and I, I think, I don't know if you can see this in the, the foot camera we have set up, but even the the linkage between all the pedals <laughs> is, I don't know how long those are. but They're Custom made for me Yeah. to reach my, my bass drum. I had to bring all my stuff from down there to DW. They measured it out, knew the links I had to have. Yeah. And these are, you can't find these links anywhere. Crazy. Yeah, they made them special for me. Now, the thing is, let me tell you, if, if you don't mind, let me tell you yeah, the, one other special thing about the three bass drums, the five bass drums. What's happening, and the other concept of what I came up with, with the melodies for the bass drum, melodic bass drum uh, setups are 503. Is that makes it really, really dynamic and interesting. And, and you know, most people wouldn't think about it, but what I do is, this bass drum right here, the middle bass drum, main bass drum, is coming up at 12 o'clock in your mix. So you're hearing it straight on. Mm. Now, this bass drum is coming at, uh, at 9.30, 9.45, or 9 o'clock if I want. And some of my original songs, I have it coming up at 5 o'clock. Mm. So it's really spread. That one's coming up at 2.30, 2.45, or, I mean, I'm sorry, five, that's at uh, 7 o'clock. This one's at 5 o'clock. So I got to have them spread 7 and 5, and then, oh, I can do them at 3, and, and I mean, at 9 and 3, or I can do them tighter as all the increments in between. And so when you're listening to me playing that those beats you just heard, I hope you have the stereo going on. Now, I, we think we're doing that in the control room where we got the panning how I have it, and you put your headphones on, you will see it going like this, you know, the bass drum patterns are going like this across your mind. and You can visualize mm. the spectrum of the bass drum. So it's more than just the audible pitch and notes and sound and dynamics of it. Dynamics coming from how I hit it, hard or soft in the, in the rhythm. But also you got the imaging, you got the audible imaging happening, which makes you almost visualize it. So that's all within the context of everything else I'm doing in the groove. So it's a pretty, uh, maybe it's 4D, 3D, 4D experience. You know, if you, if you have that set up, I hope you have that with your speakers and stuff. You can hear it going across the spectrum when I'm moving my foot around. Yeah, that's, that's one of the unique values of it. That's cool. Yeah. Um, one question I had. So for anyone who wants to get into this concept for themselves, uh, would you recommend, even if they have just two bass drums, uh, use different sizes, tune them differently to start experimenting with different pitches? And how would you recommend someone actually gets into like applying this for themselves? Well, you can only do it when you want to branch out and broaden your scope if you have three. Mm. Two bass drums is what everybody, a lot of guys have, what everybody have. You can have a higher one, low one, and you can do a little bit of thing, but it doesn't really demonstrate the melodic value of it. So it's going, doom, 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 all the night yeah. long, or doom, 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 doom. It's when you put the third note in there that it becomes a scale, more of a scale. Doom, 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 You got a third note, doom. Yeah. So I, that you have to have the third bass drum. The only way to do it is have three bass drums to get this concept of performing. And then that's the only other way. Otherwise, if you have two bass drums, you're going to have left and right, doom, 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 like this. But when you have the three spectrum, you got center, left, and right. So yeah. that makes it dynamic and incredible. And, and you got to put the headphones on and listen to this. If you, <laughs> if you, next time you view it, pull it up when it, when it comes out. And, um, and then you experience what the, my concept was I derived and, and wanted to bring to, the, to drumming. My, my hope and, and intent is always to try since young. Because I'm a visionary and uh, I, I'm an artist, graphic, I'm majoring in art and designing things. All my kids, I design the racks and stuff. But I'm into expanding the experience of drumming for drummers, for myself first, and for drummers. And I, I know that I know that there's so much more to us than it looks and seems, than rather than a timekeeper keeping a beat, mm. rather than somebody who hit uh, every eight bars hit a crash, uh, eight every eight bars hit a fill, or sixteen bars. Uh, we're, there's so much more to our diversity and what we're capable of. Because I don't know if anybody discussed this with you is that we're some of the most complex and multi-purpose or multi-capable of people in the world. I always suggest that. Every mother and father, whether they carry it out for a career or not, get your kid on a set of drums and you expand, expand his capabilities for the rest of his life. Not only on drumming, but anything and everything he ever does. Because us drummers, we have like eight brains in this big old fat head. <laughs> and I've, I've had here eight separate brains, you know, because you have to train this hand to keep the time, us total timing separate. And then this, gotta, this hand got to do us total separate timing from yeah. that. And then the, this leg's got to do the bass drum, the total separate timing. This one has to help control the hi hat, opening and closing, and odd times against everything else. <laughs> you got to understand that, right? And then that's just us whacking on stuff and doing all that stuff. That's like as if that's not enough. Then, Drummers are married to the bass player. So we got to play with them. 
You can't play against them. You got to play with them. So you have to train another division of your consciousness to listen while you're doing all your thing. Listen subconsciously, but consciously to the base parts so you can lock in because we are very important together. We're a team, supposed to be inseparable. But anyway, then you got on top of that, you have to focus on what to cue in on a riff that the guitar player is doing while you're doing all of that with the bass player. Focus on something so your other subconscious over here is focusing on the guitar licks and stuff like that and the keyboard licks and stuff. Then as a drummer, show drummer like myself, I have to focus to, on Michael's vocals, being dynamic with his vocals. I gotta be sensitive to his vocals. Madonna's vocals, Janet's vocals. I, I work with Stevie Wonder too. I work with Stevie's vocals. Whoever I'm working with, their vocals, Elton's. I gotta listen to what they're saying and how they're saying it and how they're phrasing it. Then, um, and so I got to listen to that. And then I'm another sense, somewhere in the back or the side or whatever on your neck or something, <laughs> there's another sensor, a brain sensor, and it's listening to the whole of everything. So you can hear how it's coming together in a mix within your brain. So we have multitude, like eight brains going at a uh, 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 worth of, of power going on for us. If you're a drummer, because you're taught that through learning drumming, how to subdivide your, your self-consciousness and your awareness and your uh, uh, attention to focus and develop all of those senses keenly as if each one was an individual person, an individual thing to focus on those individual things. So I say the children learn, even if it's just for fun, or to develop that. As a kid, get your kid a set of drums and you, you prepare him for the rest of the world because there's so many things happening in life and society. You have to have a multi-thinking brain. You know? So it goes beyond drumming, but drumming is the way in because no other instrument has to focus on that many things at one time. Sorry, I took up your time. Bye bye. bye. I, I was just going to say if there's anyone watching this and you're not a drummer, I think that is the best sales pitch to become a drummer I've ever heard. Yeah, and it's, but yeah, it's true. It's so true. It's very so true. true. You want your kid to be developed and prepared for the world. So beyond new drumming, you know, uh, or whatever, they got to be prepared for all the things that's happening to them at one, once because society now and social media, everything is mm. bombarding you at once, especially the children. That's why they, uh, uh, they worry about uh, children and social media. And it's, it's a more complex world nowadays. And so prepare your kid for it. Get them a drum. And they will have a great, great time, an incredible time <laughs> playing drums. I almost can guarantee you, unless they want to be a guitar player. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, this is Drumio, right? There we go. We're going to talk about drums. Huh? Forget that. I love that, man. That's, that's awesome. Uh, you have an original track you're going to play that features all three bass drums. Yeah. And this is one I guess you wrote over the last few years called Emergency. Written in 1988, actually. 1988. <laughs> Way back then, I brought it forward, and I took it in the studio. I've been in the studio on March 20th. It'll be a year in the studio constantly. I've cut 45 tracks wow. in a year's time. 45 tracks. Two of them are covers. And then the rest, 43, are all my originals. I've been sitting on since 88. Between 88 and 91, I did the bulk of my writing. And so they've been sitting on these while I'm touring and making everybody else popular, all the stars pop more popular, <laughs> and making them a lot more money than they give me. But, uh, <laughs> but it's making them rich. And I've been sitting on this music. And then finally, um, a year ago, I said, you know what? If I don't do this now, I'll never get it done. Because I'm up there, in the, up older in the years. I'm not old. But I'm up in years and time has fl gone flown by and I need, it takes time to develop your project. So I decided to invest my, invest my money, go in a real studio and cut this stuff for real. Take my original sequence I did at home, home studio, dump it into Pro Tools and start building on top, bringing in Orianti on guitar, bringing nice. in uh, my buddy Tony Boyd. He's an amazing, phenomenal bass player. I played with Barry White. He was uh, his music director for many, many, many years, a couple of decades or so. And then um, bringing in... Um, the, uh, Demetrius Hauser, keyboard player, and Rex Salas, two keyboard players I've been bouncing between, yeah. and, and doing it, and then I've been doing the vocals myself. So I've been Very singing cool. all my stuff. And I don't have the vocals on this, but there will be vocals on this track. I just want to do one of my tracks for you. Yeah. Uh, a couple, maybe one or two of my tracks uh, to hit the vibe of the groove, because I'm all about groove. This is Emergency. Love it, let's do it.
done, man. <laughs> There's some crazy stuff happening on the pedals in that track. <laughs> like you're jumping, I'd, you could probably see this in the foot cam, but jumping from the, the 18 inch drum over to the 24 yeah. and then back to the 22. <laughs> yeah. That's like foot acrobatics yeah. right there. <laughs> you got to spend time with it and you learn the patterns from the tones to tell you the patterns you yeah. have to do. Then you got to adjust the patterns and get used to it, acclimated to it. It's not easy because the, the, the difficulty is once you hit a bass drum, I'm going to do this. I hope the foot cam can catch, catch this. Yeah. Check the foot cam out. You go. See the, pad the swing is going to continue to swing. You can't control that. Once you get off of it, Hit that one. Yeah. If this is going to continue, look, it's still swinging. <laughs> and you hit this one, look. You go to that one, and you go try to go back to that one. Hopefully, it's in the right position to get the push down on the pedal to hit the head again. Yeah. Sometimes the swing is odd, and it's not in the right position. You go to hit it, and you're like, nothing. <laughs> yeah. You know, or it comes off, it, it come off beat because you lost your balance. So it's about getting knowing that happens. Trying to make yourself aware of it and do the best you can, basically, because you're at the mercy of this, <laughs> the swing and mallage. So yeah, I guess it's similar to when you're you're playing on a crash cymbal and it's moving perfectly in time, oh. and you end up in that that spot where it's it's at the furthest away position when you go to hit it. Yeah, it's the same with the beaters. Well, I don't like my just look at this. I have my, my eyes tight. I don't like yeah. it because I want it rigid because I don't want to be chasing it. Oh, whoa, 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 yeah. wait, come, wait, come on! Sure. I did that in some gigs. And it was like hard to get this, <laughs> the, the groove of the ride symbol because there's a sweet when you're riding the ride. It's usually unless it's rock, bam, 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 bang. When you do some a ballet going real light, you know, but if it's going like that, you're going to oh, yeah, <laughs> and it's not even. So I, I make my ride symbols rigid, but that's the thing. I'm at the mercy of the, pat the uh, mallets of the pedals because they swing in odd times. Yeah. Now, when you're writing a track like that or a drum part for a song <laughs> like Emergency or if you're learning, let's say, Beat It for one of the Michael Jackson yeah. tours, do you decide ahead of time that I'm going to put my bass drum concept into that song or do you hear the song and know that that song would be great for this concept? Well, what I do when I started writing in, in the mid '80s, and I got a whole bedroom, small bedroom full of heat, like in here right now. I'm sweating. <laughs> it's warm in here. I had a, a, a small bedroom loaded like a guitar center, Sam Ash, and yeah. <laughs> full of equipment. I mean, I had to get in there, I go sideways, and then turn this way and go like that. So much equipment, and it generates so much heat. But I had my live kit in there and mic'd up and ready to go. And, and stuff. So uh, I had three Lin 9000 drum machines. Mm -hmm. And as I learned, I said, I had to learn these machines, very complex at the time. I said, and I thought he, I'd hear these beats and all the pitches on the bass drum that possible, but I didn't know what I can do. So I had to learn a Lin 9000 drum machine. And then I can get all this junk out of my brain that, that the concept I'm hearing. Yeah. And I started using a high pitch bass drum, a mid pitch bass drum, and a low pitch boom. So I, when I program this song, I use uh, I use the mainly the there's mainly one bass drum on this song, and then until it gets to the breakdown stuff like that. So I think what happened on this song is mostly one bass drum. I later like now added decided to and when I did it in the studio last summer, I decided to do the three bass drums with it. So that's an afterthought gotcha. after programming the song and writing the song. There's a, some songs I I wanted it from the beginning. Because I programmed it with these drums, I said, I want to do it. But then when I, I got last summer, I said, you know, Emergency would be a great song, song to incorporate my three bass drums. Yeah. Let me do that when I'm doing it, when I'm playing drums on top of the program drums. Yeah. And I added that element of the pitches and the bass drum, which broadened it a lot more. And then most of my songs are like that. I, I changed it up and in, in, uh, last year recorded um, three bass drums on, on the top for melodic sense. A lot of real, and I'm, I'm into the funk music, so most of my stuff is really funky and grooves and dance music. I'm into dance stuff like that. I got rock some rock songs too, but most of it's built on a concept of funk and, and energy of rock. Yeah. So, uh, but I, I started incorporating. I got if I'm going to do three bass drums, if I don't use it and do it and learn how to use it and do it right, forget it. I got to yeah. do that. So I started, decided to incorporate it in my recordings and my music last year, and most of my songs have three bass drums in it. We were out for dinner the other night, and I loved what you said. You were talking about your drum kit being like a translator mm -hmm. for you as the drummer. What did you mean by that? I think that'd be cool to share with everyone. I think every instrument is a translator: guitar, keyboards, you know, violin, you know, flute. You know, every instrument that's that's musical and creative and um, and, and shows the expression, the personal expression of every individual, whoever the person is playing it. That's their identity. When they play through that, it's look. Check this out. See these. I'm gonna put these down right here. You guys hear any beats going on? Do you hear Not yet. Beats? Oh, we wait. Doesn't start up yet. 
They only mean something when a human being picks them up and does something with them. That's important. These drums will sit up there. I usually live this for 10 years. These drums will sit here and not make a sound until a human element comes in contact with it and, and expresses his soul and spirit. I get off here and you come play, it's gonna be a different soul and spirit. You get up and play, camera gentlemen, gentlemen come play. I'll give you a chance after I finish, you guys can come up and play <laughs> something, we film you. See how you like being filmed, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> now, uh, uh, you know, anybody in the control room, every individual has a voice within their sound and their concept of playing and approach to playing and the rhythms and everything, the phrasings when they play. So what I'm saying is drums, Every instrument will sit there. Like, perfect example, I hate to get dark on you. When a, a top musician or any musician dies, his guitar sits there. Mm. It doesn't make another sound. He's gone. And it's, 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 I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of, it's a shame, but it's like, that's what happens. This just becomes wood and metal sitting around unless I or another human being comes and applies your soul. So that's what I mean, it's a translator for my soul. To make it a translator, a human being like me, and this is mine, my translator, I sit back here and I can talk all day on drums and play to my heart's content or until I pass out. <laughs> but, <laughs> but if you hear me, my inner voice, not my throat voice talking, you hear my inner soul without me speaking a word. And it's the, that's the voice I use when you hear me play, when you just heard me play. That's the voice I'm talking about, gets to speak, the, the quiet voice until I get on my instrument. And we walk around all day, that voice is not heard. It's not even, it's not spoken until I get on my instrument. Mm -hmm. And every other respective musician, when they get on their respective instrument, their voice is heard on stage, man. People know who they are. They claim them by name, you know, Eric Clapton. Because they're not, it's Eric Clapton's just name until he applies his soul to his songs and plays that guitar, dude. That's Eric Clapton, that soul that's playing that guitar, you know. Uh, Billy Cobbin, when he goes on his drums, man, he makes so much unbelievable dr thunder yeah. and mega complex rhythms and patterns and rolls out of out of this world, you know. Um, but this, his drum kit sits there quiet until he gets on there and blazes everybody's minds out. You know, same thing with uh, Hendrix. After he passed, his guitar was sat there until they auctioned it off or they whatever. But it was never Hendrix again. Mm. Whoever bought it and played it, that wasn't Hendrix. It was his guitar piece of property, but. That's what I'm saying. When Hendrix played it, when he's alive, he translated. The Hendrix, we, nobody ever heard before he did it. They didn't know he could play like that. They didn't know there was a sound of music like that. You know, the Beatles, every one of them individually. James Brown, you know, all you name the artists, you know, Michael, of course, you know, until he sang, until he, he started writing songs. Nobody knew his songs within, within him until he started writing songs of his own. Not Motown assigned songs that they gave him were from songwriters. When him and my brothers, my brothers Jay, started writing their own music, they, then people got to see, whoa, that's the real Jacksons. Mm. That's the, the identity of the Jacksons. They develop a sound that's the Jacksons, different yeah. from Motown. So yes, my drums are my translated, and that's what I was talking about uh, the other night at dinner. You know, um, this is how I voice myself like I've just been doing for the last half hour. So voicing myself when you, when we stop questions and answers, now I play, I'm voicing. Here, not here, you know those I don't say a word, but here I'm saying a lot. Yeah. And I, I'm trying to reach the other souls because this is my translator, not only to your minds out there as an audience, my, this is my translator to your soul sitting in the audience, every one of you, this is my translator to each individual of you. And this is my way to make you move, especially being a drummer, the furthest most person in the stadium, they will sit there and wait for the show. But when I play my beat, they'll be like, mm. oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah. And then foot start tapping, oh yeah. Guess what, I'm translating, I'm, I'm turning on their soul. Yeah. I'm activating their soul. They feel me, they're like hundreds of yards away. But guess what, by then me playing my beats, I wake them up and I make them move. It's like the power, it's a power. We as musicians have a special spiritual power given by God that we can influence people. And I can touch you the furthest away if, if you're within sound of my beat. And I can actually animate you and make you move without putting my hand on you. That's power. Everything one in here that does that music. And everybody out there listening has that ability of music. You are given, a guy given power to reach other people and touch their spirits and their souls. It's a very, very unique, very, very special, special thing you've been, you should be grateful, thankful that you've been given a, a power and a control sensor to, to control other people in happy times now. Music is happy. 
It's positivity. It's nothing negative. So we've been given a positive power to reach the rest of the world. And you got to put it to, it's a sin to waste a gift. You got to put it to use. The whole time you were explaining that, that was so well said. I was thinking of the other night we were recording Billie Jean. Mm. And I was just thinking of you playing that groove. Can you just play us the Billie Jean groove? And I think that that demonstrates that something so simple can make anyone just move and connect with them. Okay, okay. Billie Jean beat is the most simple beat in music, I think, you know, because uh, I used to play that beat on the breakdowns in the nightclubs back in the early 70s. When they say, break it down, I go to that beat, exact beat. And uh, Michael and them heard it at the sound checks, and then they, they wound up, next thing I know, Billie Jean came out. So, But that's the most simple, infectious groove, because it's hypnotic. It's a continuous yeah. con- thing, beat going on, that never change, hardly ever changing, and it, hip- it uh, hypnotizes people. And if I was, if it wasn't me, or if I was a machine, this is how I'd play it, as a machine, okay? That's a machine like, that's timing is there. That's all, that's all they require to keep the band locked. But when I play it, I emote my soul, my spirit through it, the groove, that simple beat. And it becomes something else. Something else. My soul and my spirit becomes what you may call a chop. <laughs> Maybe a pork chop, but a chop. <laughs> that's the power of my soul. Now this is when I play Billie Jean with Michael. It's like this. And you can feel, feel the difference. You can feel my soul. I lay it back in a certain emotional state that you got to learn to learn to control, learn to identify, and learn to replicate over and over and over again like a Canon copier <laughs> and a cookie cutter. You just copy that, copy, copy, paste. It's got to be even if it's in, even within that emotional moment. Doom, that. Copy it. Doom, that. Doom, that. Doom, that. You got to think like that. And, um, and focus and concentration is key. Yeah, that, that version has a whole new life to it, you know, uh, compared to that first version you played. Yes, exactly. So. Yeah, you gotta you gotta know you know your spirit, and and uh, and know the degree of your uh, how should I say? You gotta know the, the depth of sensitivity of your soul. You gotta come and that's through practicing. You gotta become one with the instrument. Now you only can do that by practicing. It's just not instilled in you. You gotta practice with it. You come to know your drums, your guitar, whatever it was. And then, but also as you translate, you gotta feel it and know your spirit when you say, oh, that feels good, that's me. Then you gotta focus on recreating that soul and that spirit as your identity, because that's your identity, that's my identity right there. When I play or anything else you heard me play, yeah. the Janet song, whatever, that's my identity. You know, uh, soul, soul to me, my soul identity, nobody else got that. They can do something similar, everybody, everybody's individual. Yeah, mm-hmm. awesome. Now, for any of you watching, we filmed a uh, bunch of stuff for Drum U students that's going to come out this year. And one of them is a video with Sugarfoot where you're actually going to get to play along with him and learn how to play Billie Jean and really lock in with that. The time and the discipline, and I know that's a lifetime of experience that you have in that groove, but um, yeah, you can stay on the lookout for that. Okay, so we've got one more track we're going to do, but before we do that, do you have any final parting words for all the drummers and even potential drummers out there who are going to be watching this video later on? Um, I'd say find out what you love and for the rest of your life, pursue it. That's most important. You don't want to waste your time and spend your life doing something you'd hate or you don't like doing. When you get older in life, you look back and say, you know what, I kind of wasted my time. I gotta be doing this, I gotta be doing that. That makes me joy and bring me happiness. So the most important, within music or without, it's outside of music, if you do something else, painting oils or something like that, uh, whatever your passion is, designing things or doing things, creating things, uh, um, find out what that is that resonates with your soul. You, the light will turn on once you do it and say, ooh, I feel that. I could, I could do that, I should do that. You can find out what that is and spend the rest of your life pursuing it. That's what I did from a little boy who at six years old, 
picked up a pair of sticks when my father asked me what I wanted to do with, with musician I want to be. And um, I played, I decided drums. And from that point on, until 10 years old, I was playing in nightclubs, making money with my brother's band. From six to 10, I was making money. I've been making, doing the same, making a living at drumming since I was 10 years old. Pursuing my life, dreaming my passion, what I felt. The first time I played drum, I figured I could do, when the teacher tried to teach me, that, 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 and I got it even, I did it right. It's such a great, gratifying uh, feeling, yeah. experience. I could do this, I can do something. And you feel great, and at least you're on to, they show you more, they show you more, you conquer that, conquer that little by little. But um, at, by 10, I was playing the whole kit, and I was playing my brother's band, and I never turned back, you know. I, I said, this is what I want to do. I don't have, I didn't get no fallback on or nothing like that. It's, I knew this was what I was born to do and I meant to do. So I dedicated my whole life to this and I've been doing it and enjoying my life, enjoying the world, traveling the world and enjoying playing with some unbelievable, mm -hmm. not only artists, of course, the cream of the crop artists, but unbelievable, equally as talented musicians. You know, I love my love for every musician I play with on stage with is there full and still, even if we haven't seen each other for years and decades. Um, because you share a spiritual thing and you become one with the other and you, you take a little bit from that when you play with, you keep it in your soul, your spirit. So we shared the love of music and the love of, of experience and, and, and human to human touch spiritually. I wanna thank all the musicians that ever played with me, chosen or not, you know. Um, thank you for sharing your soul with me and and help me share the stage and bring my soul to the world in a complete package, which is called a song, which is called a show. So um, I'd say find your passion, figure out what you love to do and you love to experience, pursue that for the rest of your life. Anytime during the rest of your life, you'd be so happy that you did. Time well spent. Very well said. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, uh, I guess to close out, we're going to be, you're going to be playing along to one of my personal favorite Michael songs. This is Earth Song. Mm -hmm. And is there any story behind this song that you want to share before we let you take it away? Nope. No? <laughs> there it is. Uh, no. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, that, that's a personal. I just played the song. I love the song. When I first heard it, I said, whoa, that is so powerful. Yeah. And what got me about it is especially Michael's intense emotion that the subject means so much to him. You can hear it when at the end of Vamp, you hear it, and you've sort of heard it already. The emotional power he, he sings with, he dedicates it, and they say he cried because he felt the lyrics and, un and understood the importance of the lyrics when he sang it and stuff like that. So he related to sensitive things in the world. Mm. And um, that's, and you can hear him cry, his human cry when he sings it. And that moved me. And every time I get to that point of the song, I mean, the delicate part in the beginning is nice touch. You can feel the sensitivity of it. But when he gets to the emotional power of the song, man, with the choir and stuff like that, yeah. it moves the air like nothing else. And then um, that lifts me. It always kind of came into me, his spirit of singing, how he sang that. And it gives me more charge and my arms get big, my stomach get power. I can, I can hit stronger, more powerful when I get to that portion of the song. you hear it. Uh, you yeah. feel it. I hope I can emote it to you and you can feel what I'm talking about. He maybe have gone from this plane of earth, but when you hear this song and you hear him sing, he's still alive. He's still living. Every time you play his track, you hear his voice. You hear him sing. You hear his emotion. He will never die, as long as he's on his own record. And, be, and all of you sharing is him, he will live forever and ever. Amen.
that you pledge your only son What about flowering fields? Is there a time? What about all the dreams that you said were yours and mine? Did you ever stop to notice all the children dead from war? 